uh, it's a two-part example. So example, we have seven people. My question is, how many ways to sit at a straight table? So I have a straight table, I have this long table up here, and I have seven chairs. And I'm going to go ahead and just simply put everybody up here. How do I do it? How many choices do I have for the first chair? Seven. But once I sit them down, how many students are left for the next chair? Six. And so this is going to be what? Seven times six. I'm going to go ahead and write it. Eventually, we're just going to go ahead and just write seven factorial, right? It's actually, and understand, for example, what does that number seven mean? I had seven students to pick from, seven people to pick from for the first chair. But once he's sitting down, why do I have a six? Because that's, that's who's left that I haven't picked yet. I have six choices for the next, the next spot. Everybody okay with where the seven, the six, the five, fours all come from? Okay. So it's just seven factorial. We'll try a different variation of this. I have seven people. How many ways to sit at a round table if having same people to your left or right is same position. Okay, what is that all saying? What that's saying is, okay, I have a round table. That means if I have Mark here, and I have Joe here, and I have John here, right? This would be equal to a round table, and I have Mark here, but I have John here, and I have Joe here. This is what it means to be left or right says that. A mark with a Joe to his right and a John to his left is the same thing as John to the right and Joe to the left. I, mean, I don't care how you do it, right? Left or right, right or left, if you have the same people beside you, it's the same people beside you. Does everybody okay with that idea? So how many ways can I sit down? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is, if I did not care that it was at a round table or the same on left and right, I would just simply say, sit down, like the long table. If I told seven people to sit down, how many ways can I do that? I just did it on the long table, it's what? Seven factorial. So if I told them to go sit down and do it in the following way, here's, this, here's my first chair, seven choices, here's my second chair, I'm going around the table, right? So for this, my total so far, is going to be 7 factorial. Now I'm going to start, all right, time out. If I have, I'm going to look at my table for a second and I'm going to ask, is there any repeats? For example, I've got a table here. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And let's say that's the people's names. I had person one, person two, person three, person four, person five, person six, person seven. It's a round table. What would happen if the, in that one of my other times I actually would have done this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Could you tell the difference? It's at a round table. Would anybody be able to tell the difference if person one was up in the very top or person one was one spot over? Would that seem completely the same to you? Sure. What if I said, no, no, uh, person, I'm going to sit in the order of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but I'm going to put one in this position, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six, and seven. Same arrangement? Yeah, it's the same arrangement because it's a circular table. But this seven factorial counted those as if they're unique. 
because Zeb Factorial says, well, I, I sit six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, that's the same as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because this is round. So here's my question. What's happening is the following. How many symmetries are there? For example, if I had everybody in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, how many arrangements of that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are there that are actually the same? There's seven of them. There's seven radial symmetries. So uh, if you have an arrangement, I know immediately it has what? Seven radial symmetries that are the same. So I have radial symmetries to worry about. So what am I going to do? I have to, for every radial symmetry, there's seven things that I have to have. You overcounted. Divide by seven. Does that make sense? So what is the way that this is dealing with? Back up here into the division rule. The division rule is asking you if you, there are D ways for something to happen. What's the thing that I'm talking about? I'm talking about radial symmetry. And there's seven radial symmetries. So I have to get rid of them by dividing them away because I don't recognize them. All right, that's radial symmetry. How do I handle this Mark, John, Joe versus Mark, Joe, John? Well, one way I could look at this is I could look at it clockwise, and it would be Joe, Mark, John, or I could look at it counterclockwise, which is John, Mark, Joe. So having the same person on left and right, really what is it saying? It's saying if you go clockwise, or if you sit counterclockwise, I don't care. <laughs> You're still sitting by the same people. How many clockwise symmetries are there? There's two, and so I'm gonna have to divide by two. So the seven comes from radial symmetries because that's a thing that has seven variants that I recognize as being unique, as being the same thing. Why, where's the two coming from? Because clockwise and counterclockwise, another way of looking at this instead of clockwise and counterclockwise is if you aren't arranging people, let's say you're arranging molecules around a circle. If you're looking from the top or looking from the bottom, it's the same arrangement, right? I don't care if you flip this thing over, it's a mirror reflection. So I have mirror reflection symmetry and I've got rotational symmetry. And those are then, once I get rid of the rotational symmetry and the reflection symmetry, I would say that I have actually what's unique left over. So these sort of counting problems are sometimes a little bit subtle. What would happen for the seven to go into seven factorial? What would be left? That'd be six factorial. Now six factorial is six, five, four, three, two, one, right? And so if I divide that by 2, it would end up being what? 6 times 5 times, five times 4 times 3. A couple of approaches. Normally you want to get powers of 10 as you multiply things like this out. Like, don't take 12 times. I mean, we would sit there and do things like, okay, let's try it this way. What's, five, what's 6 and 5? 30, right? And probably taking, if that's 30 and taking four 30s is... 120 and then three 120s is 360. The back of the book would say 360. My personal opinion is I like that better. Because <laughs> I look at it and I know you understand the product rule and the division rule and how it works. On the other hand, you should be able to do arithmetic. I hope. <laughs>